Hey there folks, Nick here, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got something new, something exciting, something a little bit different and uh, a brand new Australian innovation that I'd like to share with you. Uh, I won this in the competition for full disclosure, I didn't pay a cent for this, it was sent to me for free, but it was a competition, competition of, I imagine, skill and chance. Uh, yeah, I don't know, I won. Uh, this is the prize. It's the Limitless Chassis Tailgate Step and it is a fantastic Australian innovation. Uh, we'll open it up. I've already had a look at this. It came fully assembled, which I am very, very pleased with because all those little bits and faults, uh, I don't think, I don't think I'd have, uh, I'd have had a fun time assembling this. Uh, so what we have here is the Limitless Tailgate, Limitless Chassis Tailgate Step. Uh, it comes with a whole bunch of hardware, whoops, and a lock. We'll have to install that a little bit later on. But right now, let's take this outside. I'll meet you out there and I'll show you what tools you need. So these are some of the tools you are going to need. Uh, number one is a 10 mil spanner. Uh, next, you'll need a 13 mil spanner, uh, a shifter of some description, or I believe a 22 millimeter wrench or spanner. Uh, for a Ford Ranger, you will need a T30 Torx bit. That will undo the bolts at the back of the, uh, the ute tub. Uh, you'll need a 5mm Allen key, uh, some sort of measuring device. I'm using a cut-off end of a tape measure because I find that a convenient length and use of a broken tape measure. Uh, the next thing you will need is a marker of some description. I'm using a fine point sharpie. It doesn't really matter what you use. Uh, then the instructions call for an 8.5mm drill bit. Uh, this was difficult to find for me in anything other than a set of every size drill bit, um, but I did find one. Uh, a drill of some description, I am using a cordless drill. Uh, you can use a corded one if you choose. And then you need a cutting device of some sort. I am choosing to use my angle grinder as well as some cutoff wheels. Uh, I also have a flappy disc that I'll be using to clean up the edges after I cut it. Uh, but you can use a hacksaw, you can use a circular saw, you can use a jigsaw, you could use a Stanley knife and ruler, um, whatever cutting device you have that you think will cut through this plastic on the back of the ute uh, will do sufficiently. So, without any further ado, let's get right into what you'll need to do. <laughs> First thing first, I'm going to grab my T30 Torx bit and I am going to undo these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bolts that hold the rear tailgate plastic cover on. Um, I personally quite hate these Torx bits, they are a pain in the butt. Uh, I personally don't also understand why there are even Torx bits on this part of the ute. It's not a security thing that really needs safekeeping. But, yeah, there you go, Ford decided in their infinite wisdom that Torx bits were entirely necessary to hold this part of the, the tub together. No, go figure. So once those have been removed, this should hopefully just come off pretty easily. A bit of sticky. But yeah, it mostly comes off pretty easy. And that just slides out like that. Now next there's this little tailgate panel here on the inside, you do need to remove that as well. And there are four more T30 Torx bolts under there, so we'll quickly remove those. So there we go, that's that panel removed, and now we've got access to the inside of the uh, tailgate cavity. Uh, let's start off with our next step. So now that the, uh, the, the two tailgate covers have been removed, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to close the tailgate 
And you can see now on the inside, actually I'll climb in, it makes it a little bit easier for me to see. So you see now on the inside that not the entire tailgate is able to be inside the ute. So what we're gonna do is take our marker and we're just gonna run it very lightly just down the sides, making a line there. And another one on the other side. And then along the bottom here, you'll notice there's a, a little plastic trim. That sits very pretty much flat with the, the bottom of your ute tub. Um, that pretty much delineates the bottom of where you can access. Now we'll open that back up. And we'll move on to the next part. So you can see now, we have a line there that tells us how far out we can go. And we have the same line on the other side. All right, so in the interest of full disclosure, I guess I need to tell you about my very first uh, setback that I had to overcome. Um, so, this part here, right, which is the bit that it hinges on, um, so this is the bottom, this is the top of the tailgate. I've had to actually remove a small section of my tonneau covers. So if you have a look here, see my tonneau cover, it hooks into this bit of aluminium channel, which is attached on the inside with rivets. Uh, well, on this side, I've had to remove a small section. I started off trying to grind it away, um, thinking that if I could you know, make it a little bit thinner along there, it would fit. Uh, inevitably that didn't work uh, so I've got my angle grinder out and just removing the second one now so That's pretty hot but there we go so as you can see I've removed that little bit there and that little bit there and hopefully they now fit so let me test that out right so now with the tailgate step situated uh, as you can see this is why I had to remove those little sections there uh, so I cannot say for sure that this will 100% fit your application every single time but with fairly minimal, minimal modification, so far at least, and you can see that hack job there was a bit, bit excessive. Um, yeah, as you can see, it now fits nicely into that gap. Now, I do still need to line everything up. None of this is lined up properly yet. Uh, I've just sat it in for demonstration purposes. Uh, but yeah, it's now sitting where it's meant to be sitting, which is good. Now, remember that line we drew earlier? See how it comes up on a slight angle? Well, if you have a look at that there, that actually goes up on a very slight angle. So the thing you have to be quite careful about that I noticed is this little bit here, which is the locking pin for this little strut here. Which actually at first glance is a little bit fiddly. Um, that locking pin there, you've got to be careful because that does stick out a little bit. And if you don't line it up right, you will end up with that pin whacking into this little bit of plastic here. So you might need to clearance that a little bit if you situate it, you know, a couple of mil over too far. Uh, but at this point, I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. Um, it's situated in, in the correct spot. I can now, hopefully, uh, let me set the camera up this way. Because this could be funny. So hopefully I can now, this isn't bolted in, but I should be able to close the U up and it closes nicely. Uh, you see it drops down just a little bit because I haven't got it bolted in, of course. Uh, but that's where it'll sit pretty much. It doesn't touch on the left. The handle on the right doesn't touch. Everything's looking good. So it's time to start drilling some holes, I think. Right, so the next thing to do now that I just did is I just put some 
just some clear uh, spray paint on these bits. Uh, basically, as I was cutting, as you could see, uh, just in the, as you can see, just in this bit, uh, I'm smearing the spray, spray, spray paint at the moment. It doesn't really matter. It's going to get all covered anyway. Uh, but I just put some clear spray paint on there. I didn't want to use white because I didn't want it to, you know, look stupid. Uh, so clear it is. So just to uh, protect those cut bits of steel there from rusting. Next step now is to wait for that paint to dry. Uh, and if you have to do something like this, you'll have to do that too. And then we start drilling holes in the tailgate. So as you just saw in that last view, I've just installed the first two bolts. Uh, I've gone with that one there on the right hand side and that one there on the left hand side. And now it's just time I've actually had to go get, I've actually just had to go get my proper tape measure. Uh, because what we need to do now is make sure that this is A square and B the right width. So as you can see, the first thing we've got is a width of 1220 across there and that's from outside to outside and what I now need to do is make sure that I've got 1220 from there to here and the annoying thing about that is that there's this little tab here that makes it difficult to do that and over there there's that little tab that won't let you measure across so this is going to take some this is going to take some messing about bear with me and uh, have a look at the other camera So I'm just going to put this first tech screw in uh, and see if this works. All right, cool. I'll tighten that down with a screwdriver a bit later on. Once that's in, now I should have an exact 1220 from one side to the other, no matter where I measure. And if you focus on that, you have a lovely 1220 there. That's fantastic. So now, in theory, now this will flip up. And in theory, this will close. It closed! Yay! And there's heaps of clearance all the way around. Let me show you. Let me show you this one little bit here that I was talking about before. See that little pin down there? So see that pin, how close that sits to the edge of the tub there? It's pretty damn close, but it does fit. And that's all that matters in the end of the day. Uh, so yeah. 
so that's all working now. Let's uh, let's put all the rest of the bolts in. So the next step is something that I'm a little bit worried about and yet I've thought that about every single step so far and it's all gone very smoothly so far. So getting this panel back in, according to the instructions I've seen, because there's a bit of an issue that I can see here straight off the bat, let me get my angle right out of the way. Keep coming, keep coming. Um, is that the two outside bolt holes mm -hmm. um, actually end up Beneath the step. And I think I've got that upside down. Yeah, so you can see how far under the step it ends up. Uh, so, what you have to do, give it a bit of a bend apparently, like that. Apparently not. Tweak and then you gotta shove it under. This is a tricky bit. There we go. Until the bolt holes line up. Ah! All good. I'm not quite able to get it in far enough. That's what she said. Sorry? Nothing. Say that's what she said. I'll, I'll accept that. <laughs> I can't quite get it in as far as I was instructed. So I'm guessing we're going to have to do some uh, surgery to this little panel. Oh, hang on. It went in too far. How is that possible? All right, we're almost lined up. Now, this is the bit that, that in particular I'm worried about is you have to, this is quite flexible. It's quite wobbly, and I've just put a bend in it. All you got to do is lift it up, bend it, and shove it underneath, like that. And then in theory, this should all line up. But not quite. We'll get there. The issue I'm concerned with now is if I have to pull this back out, it could be tricky. <laughs> yes! Lined up! Alright. Do you know what you look like? You know when dogs, you see those videos and they're jumping on blankets? You know, with their paws. <laughs> um. Yeah, it's pretty much lined up. It's not quite there. Come over and have a look. So I think it could be a factor of, of this thing as well with how I've had to situate it. Uh, but these bolts aren't quite lining up. But I think I think they're close. I'd call that close enough to um to get a screw in. So now it's time to put whoop, now it's time to put all those Torx bolts back in. Uh, just the four bottom ones because these ones actually hold the black plastic panel on. Mm -hmm. Um. So let's do that.
I need to cut this down to fit because obviously we now have a big old hinge in the way. And then measure, so you see here you've got your bolt holes mm -hmm. and then you've got this little panel here, right? What we want to do, measure from there to there and you'll get a measurement of, you know, I've got 195 millimeters. And then if we have a look at this panel here, that's the bolt hole where we're just measuring from, right? And I measured from the center of that hole. So coming out from this hole, 195 millimeters, will get me somewhere back around there. Now I'm gonna give myself five mil just to be safe, which essentially puts me straight down the middle, is essentially where I wanna be. It's 200 and, actually it's 109, no it's 209 millimeters on this side. Um, I had to cut a little notch out of the corner here, which you can't see from that angle. So I had to cut a little notch out of the corner there just to clear the hinge uh, on each side, as you can see. And uh, now all that remains to be done, really, as far as I can tell, is to finalise putting these last couple of bolts in. That should flatten out over time. Uh, it has been sitting in the sun and it will continue to sit in the sun for a bit, so hopefully they'll flatten out a little bit. I may have it a little bit tight between the two, um, but I'd rather have it a bit tight than have a big gap, personally. Um, but all in all, uh, pretty painless install, I have to say. A um, couple of modifications that I had to make, probably unique to my situation here. Uh, I just realised I forgot to put the rubber trim on top. A little bit tight. A little bit tight. That's what she said. Sure well. Where have I put my there it is. Final bolt. And I believe that is actually Oh no, no, that's not the end. There's still one more thing to be done. There's one more component that needs to be added. Oh, the lock. The lock. I did have a play with this on the lounge room floor and I found that it doesn't fit fantastically well and I have a feeling it's to do with the powder coat finish that's on here. Um, the powder coat obviously makes things very slightly, only very slightly thicker. So I've had to modify the uh, striker for the lock a little bit because, well, it didn't clear that very much at all. In fact, at all. So hopefully I've cleared enough of it away uh, that it now works. We'll see what happens. Yeah, so that was pretty much all it took. Um, as you can see, now the lock works perfectly. It locks into place. I can even use the key to lock it down. Now it won't unlock at all. Uh, it is basically locked now onto the tailgate and hopefully the moment of truth will it close oh jeez 
that's a little bit of extra weight in the tailgate now, I have to say. But it works. It works really well. Uh, fits in there really nicely. I don't love that you can see this uh, this dirty area here, but I mean, that's what it is. It is what it is. Uh, it looks really nice that it's got the plastic behind it again though. That looks fantastic. Uh, as I said, it all seems to work. It all seems to fit. Let's say I'm not a fit, sexy, attractive young man, and I need to get into the back of this ute. Well, it's pretty high up. I mean, this is this is a good meter in the air almost. Actually, yeah, it is a good meter in the air. Uh, how do I get in? Well, it's simple. Unlock that. That lifts up. Flips down like so. Uh, I've got to say, the magnet on this is tremendously strong. I reckon it needs some sort of little handhold here to pull it from because that would be my only criticism, criticism so far, is that this is a bit tricky to remove out of here. Uh, it's only a single magnet, but I reckon it's got some serious clamping force. Um, yeah, it really does take a fair bit of effort to pull that down. But once you pull it down, step up, get in the back of your ute, grab what you need, down you come. Safe, beautiful, easy. Uh, if you need to store something here while you're trying to find your jumper cables, there you go, get a nice little convenient step there. Now you can of course always use the original tailgate, flip it up, you still have full access. The only thing impeding you a little bit is that, but look, you might bump into it once or twice. It is a little bit in the way, but it's not the end of the world. It's not going you know, not, not to make it or break it. Uh, once again, very easy to pick up. Once it's up here, you get a really cool thing happen. So you will remember I mentioned this little pin before, how we had to make sure there was room. Well, what does that pin do? Well, when you remove that pin and lock that in there, what you end up with is a load stop, basically. So that is locked in place there, I believe. Yeah, truly it is. She ain't going nowhere. A little bit of a little bit of wiggle in the in the hinges, but you expect that. Um, but yeah, in essence, that is now locked in place. It won't lift. Um, it won't move from there. It is it is physically locked. And what you essentially have now is an extra foot and a half of load space. It means I can now fit 1.9 metre things in the back of this chute, which I couldn't do before. 1.5, I think, was about the maximum. So guys, that's been installing and I guess the basic usage, and a basic, I guess the basic usage of the Limitless tailgate step from uh, Limitless Chassis. Uh, they do a lot of they do a lot of other things. Uh, have a look at their website. I will leave a link down below in the description. Things, but this is genuinely one of the most amazing Australian inventions I've seen in a very long time. And I recommend if you've got a Ute, um, this will be a I think a very worthy addition to the tailgate of your Ute. Um, it's something that I personally thought the the Ranger Utes should have come with from the factory. Um, I know that the I know that the F 150 Raptors have it. Uh, I only know that because I've seen it on Demo Ranch Matt Carricker's Raptor. Um, but yeah, I genuinely think this is something that the Rangers should have had from the factory, but well, you know what? Now I've got one all of my own. And I think it looks fantastic. It's priced very reasonably uh, from what I've seen on the website. As I said, full disclosure, I did not purchase this with my own money. It was given to me as a prize for winning a competition. So if you think this is something you'd like to get for your ute, your pickup, uh, get in touch with them. Um, so if you've got a Ranger or a Triton, I think they fit all sorts of, they fit Navaras, they fit, um, what else is there? Oh yeah, the Hilux, if, you, you know, if you're one of those people that owns a Hilux. 
Uh, I'm sure they probably make one that fits that or this standard size fits that. But other than that guys, thanks very much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this uh, this install video. If you've got any ideas for things you'd like me to do to test this, uh, this thing out, check the website out down below, see what they say it can do and you tell me what you'd like me to like to see me do with it. Thanks for watching guys. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up, share it with your friends, that will really, really help me out, and uh, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching, I'll see you tomorrow. Chaz Club.